water everywhere. Water! Hey, hey. I don't come... I don't come to your house and spray you in the face. <sighs> Hello, hello everybody, Bayside here. And I know you can't hear me because there's a hell of a lot of wind right now. But you commented on my last video saying you wanted a vacation vlog. So here I am, walking with Mrs. B. And, and, say hi, hi. Yeah, she's cold. But that's why you had the plastic thing over her so stop the wind. Um, it is currently Saturday night. We are still at the vacation house until Monday. We leave Monday. But uh, the family just surprised me with dessert for dinner. You know, they kind of made it for everyone, but I didn't know they were making it. So check this out, check this out. We just made creme brulee from scratch. I didn't even know that was possible. The only time I've ever seen that made was on Food Network using a blowtorch. But they put it in the broiler and it was Perfect. But, bonus points to anyone who knows who those guys are. Baby Sides Toys, we are playing some games, a whole hell of a lot of games. Actually, I hope to film, I hope to film this one here. If you've never heard of Betrayal at the House on the Hill, that is a crazy fun game. Hi, Dad! Yes, I'm talking to my phone. It's called a vlog. Don't look so confused. Why are you attaching to the phone? Because this is what people do. We talk to our phone. So uh, the, all the crazy people are used to talk to <laughs> Yes! Yes, all the crazy people talk to their phone. <laughs> Man, that face. Okay, I'm embarrassed now. Turn it all red. We also did a puzzle. This one was really effing hard because like it starts off with really super big pieces up here and then gets down to like super tiny annoying pieces down here. But it was 400 pieces and it took us hours. It was crazy. I hear cheering. Let's go see what the family's up to. Your mouth, yay! yay! Clap your hands, <laughs> yay! Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, there you go. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, blockies, blockies. Oh, oh, can you blow kiss? Blow kiss. <laughs> 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 okay, we're done. Right. Water everywhere. Water. Hey, hey, I don't come, I don't come to your house and spray you in the face. <sighs> Hi, it is Sunday. I've done absolutely nothing. It's been great. I really have done nothing. Mrs. B and I should, you can see it back there. We should be getting into the, uh, the kayaks here. It's been really cold and windy all morning, so we were kind of like avoiding it. Hello. So we are going to be trying. It's upside down. I know there's stuff inside. Uh, betrayal at the House on the Hill. This is a board game made by Wizards of the Coast. This is the same company that makes Magic the Gathering cards and the Pokemon trading cards and uh, a bunch of other games and comics and things like that. But the game is pretty simple. Um, you choose one of your characters. Each side of the board has the same physical character, but there's a different name, different traits, things like that. But your characters have traits. Um, there's events, omens, items, there's eight dice. And pretty much the way the game starts out is 
you have the entrance to this big mansion. You have the upstairs and you have the downstairs, the basement. Your characters will take turns by exploring through open doorways and discovering new room tiles to flush out the house, to discover new rooms and, uh, and things like that along the way. They are doing uh, events, they're, they're prophesizing omens, they're collecting items. The whole point is to improve your character's stats as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Because there are two phases to this game. The first is what I just said, you're simply exploring, um, you're trying to improve your character as much as possible. You can hurt your character, which sucks, but um, you cannot die in the first phase of the game. After a certain point, one of the characters will trigger what's known as the haunt. Uh, some sort of supernatural thing is going to happen that is going to be bad. It's going to be against you guys. Chances are one of the characters is going to become a traitor or they are simply going to die and assume the role of whatever monster is trying to kill everybody else. At that point, the surviving characters will have their survival guide. In here, it's going to tell them what they need to know about the monster and how to defeat it. Whereas the monster or the traitor will have their traitor's tome, which will tell them roughly the same information, but it's going to be different enough to where both sides have their secrets. For example, the survivors are going to know how to defeat the monster, but the monster is not going to know how they can be defeated. So they might walk into a trap and not know it. Uh, same thing with the, the traitor. The survivors are not going to know what the monsters or the traitors can do as far as their abilities. They're not going to know their stats or what their end game goal is. So both teams are kind of trying to work against each other to survive or succeed. Um, that all sounded really complicated, I know. But the whole game takes about an hour. It is absolutely amazing. So I am going to kind of jump in here. I'm going to go grab everybody else. They're downstairs. And we're going to jump in here. I'm going to kind of give you a quick speed through of the game, show you how it works, and pretty much why you guys need to buy this. This is a sick, sick game. It is for three to six players, and like I said, it takes about an hour. So let me go get them. So, my sister here chose Peter... Akimoto. Akimoto. It's a little kid. You can see the stats of speed, might, sanity, and knowledge. Um, I am Father Reinhardt. I have slightly different stats. And then Mrs. B is Madame Zostra. You always pick Madame Zostra. Why do you... Okay, anyway. That's her girl. Yeah. It's blue. It's blue. So, the person whose birthday is coming up next goes first. Woo! Which would be Peter here. So, she's going to move based on her speed. He's going to oh, move. Sorry, he. Come on, focus, little phone. There we go. Speed of four. So, you can move up to four tiles. So, go ahead and move. You're moving up the foyer, up the staircase, into the upstairs. And you see they walk through an open door there. So we have to discover what room that's going to be. You have found the a, bloody room. The bloody room, and it has an item card. So draw an item. We get the medical kit. But that's pretty much how the game proceeds until we start the haunt. Um, so I will be back at that point. All right. So here is what the game board looks like now. Me, I have really bad stats. Only one item. She has good stats with a whole bunch of sweet items. Mrs. B over there has good stats with a whole bunch of sweet items. I got screwed. But this section here is the basement. This is ground floor. This is the upstairs. Um, every time you play this game, the rooms, everything are completely different. So the house looks different. It all depends on where you move and, and things like that. But Mrs. B just started the haunt. So go ahead and take the traders home. Let's figure out which haunt we're doing. What room am I in? You are in the wine cellar, and you got... No, no, she's in the charred room, actually. Oh, sorry, you're... Yes, you're in the charred room, and... She which... got the skull. Was it the skull? Page 47. Page 47. So, let's look at the chart here. So, she had the skull, 
and it was in the charred room, 47. So haunt number 47 has the haunt revealer being the traitor. So that means Mrs. B is going to be the bad guy. At this point, she takes the traitor's tome and leaves the room and reads her portion while me and my partner here are going to read the survival guide for the same story, haunt number 47, and then we try to figure out who wins. So our haunt this time is called Worm Ouroboros. Your friend shudders and drops to the floor. Blood and foam spill from your friend's open mouth. Then your friend's body splits in two. Holy crap. As if a giant zipper opened from head to toe, the worm Ouroboros, the great snake that circles the world, has forced its way into your reality through the body of your dead friend. Okay, so Mrs. B just died. The traitor has transformed into the worm Ouroboros, a giant two-headed snake with a very long, large body. If it grows fully, there will be no stopping it. You need to kill it quickly. <laughs> you win if you kill it. Okay, so I'm there in the vault. You're here in the cellar. We're both in the basement. And it doesn't look like we need to go anywhere. We just kind of have to stick together and fight this head. Well, don't we have to grab the skull? Uh, yeah, I think we do. Because we have to pick up the skull in the room where the traitor dropped it. Yeah. So we have to go find that skull upstairs. And then we have to start hunting down these heads. Do you think it's safe, safer to stay together? I think we should stay together, depending on... Both our mites suck. You're, they... a, you're a kid and I'm an old guy. Exactly. And, and the thing is, there's two heads and it's going to take multiple hits. Yeah, and if the even after we weaken it, the mite is five. And we my mite is two. I'm three. Um, just so you guys know, a mite of two means I roll two dice when I'm doing an attack or defending. So that means that the head is gonna roll five dice. <laughs> I have a very this kid is bad chance. Oh, and also the dice only go from zero, uh, one and two. So I mean it's possible for me to win, but not likely. I guess we're just going to meet up, stick together, and try to get the skull. Yep. Sounds like a plan. All right. Let's get Mrs. B back here. Break. Break. So, Mrs. B is back. She has her book, and she just did her setup for her portion of the Trader's Tome. And we are thoroughly confused. Because she now has two Ouroboros heads in the room, which makes sense based on the story we read. These are all the items that she dropped. But she also requested 16 other monster tokens. What the bloody F is she going to be doing with 16 other monster tokens in addition to the two that she already plays as? Okay, so the game has progressed a little bit. There's a lot of these little green shits all over the place. I don't know what they do yet. But all of us, Mrs. B, her sister, and myself are in a room all together. Mrs. B just attacked me because I have the lowest might of two. <laughs> Weak little punk. Which means you only roll. Uh, yeah, so I roll, only rolled two dice. Mrs. B rolled six dice. And that was her result. And that was my result. <laughs> <laughs> so I just took seven points of damage. How much I, could you have handled? I could have handled four. The fifth one killed me. So you dead dead. So I did dead. Like... Toe up. So now I'm dropping all my stuff. And I'm saying I hate this game. Don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back for the exciting conclusion of this damn game. So the game is now over. We managed to cast the spell on one of the two worm heads, making it vulnerable, but we were never able to actually harm it. So Mrs. B officially took zero points of damage the entire time. She filled the house with green poop. With these little green, these little green worm shit things. They're actually the worm body. Oh, it's the worm body pieces. She ran out of all sixteen pieces, and now she is declaring herself the winner. You have encircled the house. Your massive coils loop around it, crushing the timbers and preparing them for your supper. You grow larger and more powerful with the energies released. Soon, you will grow great enough to circle the world and capture it within your coils. Damn. And after the world is yours, the stars must surely follow. 
So we almost made it through the room stack. That's a record. Yeah, this is the official house. A very large basement. And yeah, that's the way. Look at this, look at this. This is B's sister here. Ended up with like every freaking thing possible. But it um, wasn't enough. Well, no, no, no. We're still lost. Yeah, so I hope I've shown you enough of the game to show you why I love this game. It's absolutely different every single time you play. And then, as you saw, there's a huge chart of different haunts that you that take place. Different traders. So, um, previous games, we have run into zombies. There has been aliens. There has been witches. Uh, there has been, like, a, a tentacle monster. This one was, like, the... T virus, Resident Evil worm monster, or a uh, What else have we seen? Those are the main ones. Yeah, those, those are the main ones. We've seen a bunch of stuff, and there's still a lot of stuff we haven't even seen yet. We've played this a billion times. So, anyway, as I said, you should pick the game up. It's late. I'm going to bed. Push. <laughs>